Hello and welcome to African Farming. My name is Batebile Modutwane, and in studio we have a favorite face to the show, Dr. Tapelo Makai from Elenko. And of course, animal health is on the table. Dr. Tapps, welcome. Thank you for having me. Dr. Tapps, we've been having great rain recently. And of course, with rain comes diseases. One of these diseases is Rift Valley Fever. What is that all about? So with Rift Valley Fever, obviously it is caused by external parasites. So with good rains comes parasites. Not only ticks, uh, but we also have issues with flies. We also have issues with mosquitoes. So essentially, Rift Valley Fever is that disease, it's a viral disease that is passed from animals uh, to one animal via mosquitoes. So essentially it's a mosquito bite. So I heard that we as human beings can also contract this disease. Um, is that true? Very true. So let me just backtrack a little bit. <clears throat> With Rift Valley Fever, it may cause abortions. Obviously we're talking about cattle, we're talking about sheep, we're talking about goats. Uh, not only does it cause abortions, it may also cause deaths. So, you know, normally farmers would want to, when the animal has died, they would want to do their postmortems, uh, you know, trying to investigate what is the cause of deaths on the farm or what is the cause of abortions on the farm. But now you must remember uh, there are different types of diseases that may cause abortions. I don't know if you remember, Tabs, at some point we talked about brucellosis. Yeah, I remember that. Brucellosis causes abortions. So it can be easily confused. How does it get transferred from animals to humans? These diseases that move from animals to humans, we call them zoonotic diseases. So a farmer, a dead animal, wants to do postmortem to open up to see what is the cause of the death. That's when the transmission happens. Because remember, there's blood everywhere, you know, it can spill, maybe you've got a cut or when you cut in the blood, blood droplet from an animal into your eye and stuff. But wait, I didn't tell the kicker. With Rift Valley Fever, not only does it cause deaths in animals, but it may also cause deaths in human beings. That's why human beings or farmers or farm workers need to make sure that you know, they protect themselves while they're doing different postmortems. You said that you can get it through cutting and looking into animals. How long does it stay on the, on the actual, the, the carcass of the animal? So essentially what happens is that it's, it's a viral you know, disease. It, it can stay there for a significant number of days because as long as the animal is not cut, the virus is still within the blood or even the organs of the animals. Let's say now I do contract this disease. Um, what do I do going forward? Okay, so with this disease, obviously um, there are different symptoms. One of the first symptoms that you will see... Sorry, symptoms on humans or animals? We're talking about you. Ah, there we go. We're talking about you. We'll come mm. to, the, to, to the animals. Mm. So in humans, the first thing that you'll notice, you know, it occurs maybe about four to six days, about a week. Mm that you've contracted the disease. You know, it'd be high, high temperature, so you'd be feverish, and you'll, you, you'll um, show a typical flu symptoms. So immediately when you feel fluish, you know, sore body, and you know, you're coughing and high fever, you must know that something must be not right. But now you, you must remember, it could be anything. Hence, you need to consult, you know, your medical doctor. That is very, very interesting to hear. I didn't know that. But let's talk about the symptoms of Rift Valley Fever on animals. Okay, Taps, you must remember that, uh, you know, with any disease, with any sickness, you know, first thing that you'll notice is that, you know, the, the way your animal carries itself is not normal. For instance, you'll see that whilst other animals are grazing, you know, this one particular one is not feeling well, is not grazing with the rest of the animals. But again, going back during the processing of your animals, remember one thing that I really advocated for was farmers being able to use thermometers to take temperature of the animals. Why? Because as soon as the temperature is high, you are able to isolate the animal that is not feeling well. So high temperature, 
lethargy, that's what we call it, where the animal is just not itself, you know, and in appetence, it doesn't really eat well the way it's supposed to. All of a sudden, you see an increased number of abortions on your farm. What could it be? It can either be brucellosis or rift in this case. But now with rift, you see deaths, animals dying on your farm as well. So, but now at this stage, this is like the latter stage of the disease that one needs to bear in mind. Now, as a farmer, how do I make sure that this disease does not enter my farm? Yes. So, we're not going to really go into depth about uh, biosecurity, but biosecurity is very important. You know, vaccines or vaccinations of your animals are very important. But we'll talk how can Ilanco help you out over and above vaccines. So there are two types of animals that one needs to consider. The pregnant animals and the non-pregnant animals. With the pregnant animals, you try to use the inactivated vaccines, the dead vaccines. Why? If you use a live vaccine, you might cause abortions. abortions. So you will want to use inactivated or attenuated vaccines. And in the non-pregnant animals, you can go ahead and use live vaccines. Ilanco doesn't have vaccines. However, remember, we're trying to control parasites, ectoparasites. So as Ilanco, we've got a product, uh, Trifenda. Now, Trifenda is a pour on dip. How does it work? Essentially, it has two ingredients, Amitraz and Cypermethrin. Amitraz is responsible for controlling your ticks, you know, your mites and all of that. Cypermethrin, however, helps in reducing the number of flies and mosquitoes on your animals. So essentially it kind of repels uh, the, the flies and mosquitoes, which obviously will help control um, external parasites on your farm. Dr. Tepps, thanks for your time. My man, thank you for inviting me. Remember, the conversation does not have to stop here. Please continue engaging with us at hashtag African Farming or AfricanFarming.com. We farm better together.